Estradiol is typically thought of as a hormone that is only present in women, but it is also present in men. Now in men, the body produces testosterone and a portion of that naturally converts to estradiol. So both testosterone and estradiol naturally occur in men's body. Of course, in different ratios, testosterone being much higher than estrogen, but a, a certain level of estradiol is actually physiologic and normally present in men. Now, Estradiol is important for gaining and maintaining bone density in men, and it also plays a role in sexual drive as well as body composition. So this is a very important hormone to recognize in men and actually test in conjunction with testosterone. The ideal or optimal level of estradiol in men is currently a topic of great debate, and there is no general consensus among healthcare providers on a specific range that men uh, need to have their estradiol levels maintained at. Now, a review of the literature, however, does show that on the lower end, anything below 20 picograms per milliliter of estradiol is associated with increased risks of osteoporosis, which is thinning or weakened bones, and it can actually increase a man's risk of fractures later in life. So we know that on that lower end, less than 20, there can be harmful um, long-term health outcomes if we suppress a man's estradiol level too low. A study was actually published in 2013 that additionally showed when estradiol levels are low, men have decreased sexual drive and functioning as well as increased fat mass. So this was a very interesting study that showed uh, estrogen is not only associated with gaining and maintaining bone density, but is also an important factor in men's sexual functioning as well as overall body composition. Now, there was one study published in 2009 in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which did show that in elderly men with congestive heart failure, a range outside of 20 to 30 picograms per milliliter was associated with increased mortality rates, and that is death rates. So this study did focus on a very specific population of men. It was men with congestive heart failure. So can we extrapolate the data from this study in this specific population of men to all men on testosterone replacement therapy, regardless of their age and regardless of their history of congestive heart failure? That is, I would say, unclear, but that is one study um, that's important to mention. And again, the range of 20 to 30 outside of that range was noted. So among health care providers, like I mentioned, there's still significant debate on the ideal level, but it is definitely clear that below 20, there are long-term health risks. Now on the other end of the spectrum, what would be too high of an estradiol level? That's a great question, and I hear that one all the time. And some men, I think, tend to obsess over their estradiol level and say, well, you know, it's above 30 or it's above 35. We gotta bring that down. Why is that too high? Now, in my uh, professional opinion, and a lot of providers would agree with me, if a man is not symptomatic with um, symptoms of excess estrogen, which would be nipple sensitivity, gynecomastia, which is enlargement of breast tissue, possibly moodiness, irritability, water retention, swelling in their feet, if they don't have any of these classic symptoms of elevated estrogen, um, do you need to suppress their estradiol level? And I would tell, I tell my patients, not necessarily. You know, the upper end of what is considered safe, a safe normal range of estradiol is currently undetermined by literature. There's no general consensus. But if you're not symptomatic um, with the, these um, classic symptoms of excess, excess estrogen, it does not necessarily need to be suppressed because there are greater risks of suppressing your levels too low. In men, both testosterone and estradiol naturally exist, but in different ratios. Now, when testosterone is replaced in any form, a portion of that will convert over to estradiol. So when we're placing men on testosterone replacement therapy, it's not all about checking their baseline testosterone and bringing that to an upper end of normal range or to an optimal range. We also have to be looking at, well, how much of that testosterone is converting over to estradiol and manage that level as well. 
Now, this is not true for all men, but in some patients, they will tend to convert excessive amounts of testosterone to estradiol. If this occurs, a man may become symptomatic. Um, those symptoms would include nipple sensitivity, breast tissue enlargement, moodiness, irritability, water retention, swelling in their feet. So if a man is converting over to estrogen and has those classic symptoms of elevating estrogen, we can actually control the amount of testosterone that converts over to estradiol. The way that it's done is with an aromatase inhibitor. Now, the generic name of the one traditionally used or commonly used is anastrozole. So this just decreases the conversion of testosterone to estradiol. Now it is dose dependent, meaning the lower the dose of the estrogen blocker, the more testosterone is allowed to convert to estradiol. So as we increase the dose, less and less will convert to estradiol. So it's very important when a provider places a patient on an estrogen blocker or an aromatase inhibitor such as anastrozole to follow up with blood work and retest that estradiol and make sure it's not suppressed too low. Um, as I mentioned previously, a level below 20 picograms per milliliter on estradiol is associated with um, adverse long-term health outcomes, in, including increased risk of osteoporosis, even cardiovascular disease, and men can also experience uh, decreased sexual functioning as well as increased uh, fat mass. So it's important to recognize that, yes, we need to control estradiol if a man is symptomatic, but not push them so far to the end, other end of the spectrum where you're suppressing their levels and putting them at risk for uh, detrimental long-term health outcomes. The traditional method of testing estradiol levels in men is with an immunoassay test. And recent literature has actually shown that this method of estradiol testing can actually overestimate the amount of estradiol present in men. And this was found specifically in men with increased inflammatory markers, such as uh, high CRP. So our clinic, uh, Prime Body, including myself, our network of providers, we actually use a more specific test that will give more accurate readings in terms of estradiol in men. This type of test uses liquid chromatography and has been shown to be much more accurate in terms of reflecting the actual amount of estradiol present in men. And this is important because when we check blood work, we're actually relying on those results to help us manage our patients. And if we have a, I would say, outdated test, the immunoassay test, and it's telling us the man's estrogen level is, is really elevated and we treat that to lower them, um, that could actually cause long-term uh, detrimental health outcomes if we suppress their estrogen levels too low just because we're using an outdated test that tends to overinflate or overestimate the amount of estradiol present in a man's system. So that is the reason that we're using this for updated test, the liquid chromatography, and any patient coming to Prime Body will have access to this test.